Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, Administrator Dixon, I, I appreciate you giving us an update on the on the on implementation of the certification bill. Um, I, I want to make note, I, I said earlier that we have a number of outstanding uh, mandates that are required under the 18 Authorization Act. Uh, the 2016 uh, extension has some outstanding issues that have not been addressed. Um, uh, it, it's confusing to me to see how the FAA has chosen uh, some, I guess, discretionary projects to move forward on, uh, like airport SMS rulemaking or a reorganization of the UAS integration office, rather than prioritizing some of the mandates in the law from 2016, 2018, or the December 2020 uh, Act. Uh, can I get your commitment today that the FAA will, will no longer view some of the mandates in law uh, as suggestions, uh, and, and you will prioritize the implementation of those over some of these discretionary projects? Uh, Ranking Member Graves, I, I want to make it very clear to you and uh, the leadership of the committee and all the members of the committee in the Congress that the FA is absolutely uh, committed, and I am personally committed to accomplishing uh, everything that the Congress has, has uh, required us to do. Uh, most of the uh, issues where we uh, see extended timeframes have to do with full notice and comment rulemaking. And there have been a few examples uh, already raised on that this morning. Uh, in terms of the overall five-year uh, reauthorization, uh, we have uh, currently accomplished as of this morning 191 out of 300 uh, of those uh, mandates. So we're running at about 63%, about three years in. Uh, about a quarter of those remaining are the rulemakings, which have extended uh, extended timelines in many cases, depending on the complexity uh, of the issue. But uh, I, I absolutely respect the role of Congress, and we take uh, uh, you know that direction extremely seriously. I push my team very hard uh, on this. In fact, uh, when I arrived at the agency, some of the first questions that I asked about was why, why some of these things are taking so long. Ad Administrator, and, I've got, I've got a few other questions. I've got a few other questions. I just, if I can just get a commitment from you that, that the law is going to be prioritized over these discretionary projects, uh, that, that would be great. We will always pro prioritize the uh, mandates that we have from Congress. Yes. Thank you, Administrator. Administrator, earlier this year, uh, ranking member, full committee ranking member Sam Graves, and I sent you a letter regarding some concerning uh, comments out of uh, EASA, uh, specifically um, uh, the Director General Key uh, said, quote, that they were moving away from the established practice of relying on the FAA for certification of U.S. aircraft. Uh, as you know, and as indicated in our letter, this does violate some of the bilateral agreements and the response that you sent us, you indicated that you would be monitoring some of the EASA activities to determine if there were any uh, violations of that agreement. Um, I, I just wanted to ask quickly if you've seen anything out of uh, EASA that appears to, to, to violate the, the uh, BASA, the bilateral agreement we have uh, with, with the Europeans. Uh, the, the short answer is uh, I have not seen any violations of the, bi the bilateral agreement. It continues to be foundational to the relationship that we have. And that was reinforced this summer. Uh, we had a, a, uh, uh, a summit on aviation safety uh, with uh, the uh, European Commission, and both of us uh, recommitted to the importance uh, of the bilateral aviation safety agreement. We also meet on a regular basis at the uh, executive director level uh, with them. And we have a delegation uh, over there uh, meeting with them to make sure that we work through the issues. I think it's important also to emphasize that there are uh, somewhat different administrative and review processes between the two authorities. And so that's why we'll, we'll see sometimes uh, delays on one side or the other as we make decisions and validate That's, each other's th process. Thank you, Administrator. I just urge you, please uh, remain vigilant there. I think I think this is uh, an important issue. Um, changing gears a little bit, um, uh, in the FAA's 2022 budget proposal, uh, there are several actions related to the reorganization of the FAA's uh, Office of Investigations and the Office of Investigations and Personal Responsibility, or OPR. Um, the only action that was in the certification bill is directed the FAA to rename the office. Uh, can you assure the committee that that the actions that, that you're taking are consistent with the law that existed uh, before uh, 
the, the, the certification bill became, which again, it, it, it clearly defines the, the authorities. Could you, could you um, respond, please? Yes, we will act consistent with our authorities and uh, we'll work with the Congress uh, very closely as we move forward to uh, implement this section. Thank you, and and I'm out of time, so I just um, want to want to quickly state uh, for the record that it was not Congress's intent uh, to transfer uh, primary investigative authority uh, for for whistleblowers uh, retaliation to the Office of Audit and Investigations or AAE. Instead, as the law clearly states, AAE may investigate allegations of whistleblower retaliation only if another office like OPR, the Inspector General, or the Office of Special Counsel uh, refers to them. In the interest of time. I'm going to yield back and, and convert this into a question for the record, but um, I did want to make that clear in the record of the hearing. Uh, yield back.